Hey, it's Jeremy here. I'm gonna be showing you how to create a quick grain effect in Illustrator CC. So I use this, you know, when I'm creating some nice shading or effects to add a, a bit of, you know, depth and dimension into my illustrations. And it really works well. And I'm gonna show you a simple technique that you can use um, on any project. So you can see here, I've got two circles. I'm just using some simple colors here. And what I wanna do is select this circle here and I'm gonna make a copy, Control C, Control F. So we have a copy here. I'm going to go to the top left corner, press effect, go down to the Photoshop effects down here, and we're gonna to go to texture and go to grain. So you can see that, we're gonna click that. So we've got a few options here. We've got, you can see how it says the grain, grain selected. We've got the intensity and the contrast. So the contrast makes it more light or darker. And then the intensity determines like how many dots it is. Is it really gonna be intense? full color or is it just gonna be really more, you know, chilled out and subtle, as you can see there. So I usually like to have it somewhere in the middle. And we've got some different grain types. So if you click the drop down menu, you can see you've got regular, soft, sprinkles, clumped. I'll just go through these so you can see, just using my mouse tool, and you can see all the different effects. Usually what works well is stippled, sprinkles, and regular usually. So I prefer to use stippled for the shading. So I'm gonna use, Stippled, I'll just gonna drop this down a little bit like that. And then we're gonna press OK. So you can see here at the moment, it's just one big blob. And you wanna keep in mind that um, it's not really a vector effect. So if I zoom in, you can see it's like pixelated. So Illustrator recognizes it as one shape. So it recognizes it as a vector, but it's actually a raster effect. But um, the good thing is that it's editable and you can mess around with it. So if I go to my gradient panel, I'm gonna drag this out. What we wanna do is select the gradient. And you can see now we have more control in it. If I just put black and white, which usually you'll have, you can see the effect there. And it fades it out. It makes it more subtle. So you can see here, we've got the black and the white and it's on linear and there's no angle. We can change the angle to 90 degrees or 120 if we want. So whatever we want, and we can play around with the slider. So what we're gonna do is go to my transparency panel as well. Um, to open those, you go to window, and then you got gradient here and transparency. Transparency panel allows us to play around with blending modes, which is very useful. So you can see that I've got the black and the white, and what I'm gonna do is select this and go to multiply. So you can see already it's adding that nice grain effect. So I'm gonna zoom out, you can see that. If I zoom in, you can see all the little dots there, all the little grains, and you know it's flexible, we can edit it and move it around. But you can see it's a bit clumpy, it's not smooth. So instead of having black, what we can do is drag our red color, the same color as the shape. I'm gonna drag, left click, drag it from the swatch panel into the slider here, and then let go. And now you can see that it's gotten rid of all those, that blobby bit, and now it's like a smooth transition. And it adds a nice tone to it and the effect looks a lot better. So you can see you play around with that. You know, you can play around with different blending modes as well. So if I go through, you can see what happens, but you can see some of the blending modes, it doesn't really work well. So that's why usually I just leave a multiply for the shading. For this one, we're gonna add a similar effect, but we're gonna do a highlight. So this time I'm gonna select the shape, press Control C, Control F, make a copy, go to effect, we're gonna go back to texture and grain again. But instead of using stippled, we're gonna to go to sprinkles. So this really this one works well usually for highlights. So just play around with this. That's fine, and press OK. So you can see there the same thing. It just makes it a full, you know, level, but we want to make it into a gradient so it can fade out once again. So you can see there we've got the same red color and we want to have this on white and we want to have the opacity at 0%. So you can see if it's on 100%, it doesn't work well and it has a color there, but we don't want a color, we want just to fade out. And if you don't want this like a white tinge, you can actually just drag the red into it and it'll get rid of that so the sprinkles fade out more nicely as it goes all the way there. And then what we can do now is go to my blending mode and usually go to screen. Screen looks all right. Or you go color dodge or overlay. If you zoom in there, it makes it pink. 
hard light there. That looks all right. And the other ones that really work well. So I'm just scrolling through here and you can see the effects of that. And then normal just looks like that. So you can see it adds like a nice highlight. And this adds like a nice shading. So that's a simple way to add some grain effects. And when you zoom out, it looks really good. And when you have your illustration, it will look cool. So that's a simple way to add effects, add a nice grain. That's going to really make your illustration stand out and really help you to explore different techniques and styles of illustration and, and vector work. So it's really going to help you um, progress and move forward. So yeah, thanks for watching the tutorial. Click the subscribe button if you want to see some more creative design content every week. And I look forward to creating more videos for you. So catch you next time.